finally here. We have arrived in Bali. Hello and welcome back to another Digital Nomad update. Today I don't have to talk about the logistics of what it's like planning a trip to Bali from the UK because I'm here, I'm in Bali, it's finally happened. So first up, I wanna catch you up on what we've been doing up until now. I have been filming anything and everything I can find opportunity to film, so I can keep you up in the loop of what we've been doing up until now. The 3rd of September, we landed in Bali at about midday, and I thought, perfect, by two, three o'clock, we will be settled and ready to go out and start exploring. That was not the case. By the time we got through all of the COVID restrictions and actually made it up to Abood, it was about four or five o'clock before we'd even stepped foot into our Airbnb. That coupled with the fact that we'd probably missed a full night's sleep meant that we were dead on our legs. We didn't do anything that first day other than eat and sleep. So the actual journey, the exciting stuff started the next day. We had two days staying in a little Airbnb right in the center of Abood. I'll pop the details of the Airbnb on the screen because it was honestly incredible. The price was insane and the staff were amazing. The whole thing was 10 out of 10, even had breakfast included that we weren't anticipating. So I can't rate the place more. I did book early on during COVID time. So I may have got a better deal because of that sort of thing. But for the most part, it is still really affordable to stay here and you could probably get a good deal. We used the rest of the time we had in this Airbnb once we got over our jet lag to just explore. We walked for hours and hours around Abood, sweating like no other. It's very hot. It's too hot. Too hot. While we looked at everything from the markets to rice terraces to the Lotus Palace and all of these beautiful places that people say should be on your to-do list to go to. On that first day, we also even went and saw fire dancers. <laughs> we really did make the most of just one day in the center of a booth. And then it was time for me to sign off and have a little bit of a break. I haven't had any true time off from my business for a while. Every time I say that I'm gonna have a week off, I get roped back in with something. So this first week we had booked to stay at a place called the Udea. This again was something that I booked during COVID and got an incredible deal over half price to stay at a private pool suite in their resort. So for the next seven days, we explored the length and breadth of anything we could fit in in a boot while still trying to make the most of this beautiful resort and not just being out the entire time. And I will say I absolutely loved it. A boot was so magical, so beautiful. The architecture, just the feel of the place felt so foreign to me. And I know that sounds really stupid, but it really did feel like a completely different world, like something I'd never experienced. The only downside that we had was that it rained like no other. We had torrential downpours pretty much every single day that we were in Abood. I think we had two dry days, but the rain only lasted for an hour or so and we really made the most of it regardless. We did the monkey forest, we went and saw the elephants, literally all the things that I had written down that I desperately wanted to do. There are only about two or three things that we didn't get around to, which I will for sure be doing in the future. I'm gonna pop in all of the footage of all of these adventures for you so that you can see exactly what we've got up to. Next up on our stop, it was time to move. We had to leave our beautiful resort. I desperately wanted to get down to the coast, see what the weather was like here, see the sea again. But the concept of leaving this beautiful resort was really bittersweet. We had just a couple of days booked in Seminyak. And honestly, I had really mixed feelings before we even went to Seminyak. I had heard such mixed reviews from people either loving it or hating it. And I've got to say, I kind of fit in the latter category. 
think of it, the only way I can imagine to describe it, to relate to being like back home in the UK is consider like Benidorm. It's the closest thing that you can get to Benidorm in Bali. It's all a bit grubby. People are like shouting for you to come in and have a shot when you're walking down the street. And that was the other thing that was really surprising is that nobody walked anywhere. We were one of the only people like walking down the street. So taxis were beeping us as we were walking past to say like hop in. Whereas in Abud, you were stopped to ask for a taxi an awful lot, but there was also a lot of other people walking around on the street and kind of finding their way around and exploring by foot. That does not seem to happen more down by the coast. And then finally, on the 15th of September, we left Samanyak and landed here in Mangu or Chamagi is roughly where we are, which is just outside of Changu in a little bit of a quieter location. And now we're kind of settled here for a little bit of a longer period of time. Since we've been here, the exploring has kind of ceased a little bit. We're more so just going out for dinners, doing scooter lessons and things like that to acclimatize and get used to being in Bali. And honestly, for my thoughts so far, is just so far so good. Funny thing that we're finding difficult where we're based right now is the wildlife. In Ubud, we were staying in a really, really fancy resort. So we saw very little by way of wildlife. I think we saw one gecko in our room the entire time we were there and a few out like near the pool and stuff like that, but nothing kind of confronting us. Where we are now, we've already had a couple of stints with some dogs on the street that haven't been the nicest and have shaken us up a little bit. And we are big dog lovers, so that says a lot. But also we have two pets, so to speak. I'm gonna call them pets. We have a gecko that loves our room and keeps coming back every day which you might even hear in the background of this video at some points just clicking away and a rooster that wakes us up every single morning this is a really common thing that i hear about in bali but i didn't expect it to be as bad as it was it starts usually around like half six roughly and goes through until around half seven and then the rooster shuts up for maybe half an hour to an hour just enough time for you to settle back in and maybe start falling back asleep before he kicks back off. And that's the rundown for my very first Nomad update while living in Bali. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you wanna see more of it. I'm gonna be showing you more day in the lifestyle stuff of what we're doing, how we're balancing work and travel and exploring this wonderful place. And don't forget, we're not staying here for too much longer. We have four weeks in this location and two more months to explore the rest of the island. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.